In this video, I want to go through an example of the uncertainty principle and show how you can still calculate this uncertainty in the macroscopic world as you can in the microscopic quantum world. So uh, so basically what I want to do with this problem is show that, you know, we introduced the uncertainty principle in the previous video and it was introduced as a base level property of quantum mechanics. But this is applicable in any situation, uh, even something in the macroscopic world. And we'll show that it's just not as important in the macroscopic world as it is for microscopic objects. So let's look at this problem. So it says calculate the minimum uncertainty in the position of a bullet of mass five grams that is known to have a speed somewhere between this range, right? So you basically know that the bullet is traveling at 350 meters per second. And the only uncertainty is in like the fifth digit, right? So, um, so that gives you an uncertainty in the velocity, right? So we have an uncertainty in velocity. Right, so we'll say that's delta V. Our uncertainty in the velocity is going to be 1.0 times 10 to the negative five meters per second, right? So we basically know this speed out to the fifth decimal place. Okay, so we wanna calculate the minimum uncertainty in the position so we can use uh, the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. So we wanna calculate the minimum uncertainty in position. So the position uncertainty, right? So we know that the Heisenberg uncertainty principle is delta rho times delta Q. It's going to be equal to one half H bar, right? It's got to be at least this so we can get the lower limit of our, um, of our uncertainty in the position, right? So what we need to do is just isolate delta Q, which is our uncertainty in the position, isolate that guy. So we got one half, well, let's just do H bar over two times delta rho. Now the uncertainty in momentum, momentum is gonna be mass times velocity. So that means that our uncertainty in the uh, momentum, since the mass of our particle isn't changing, the mass of the bullet isn't changing, right? We got two M, delta v as our momentum right since we have momentum as mass times velocity okay so now if we plug everything in right so we'll have our Planck's constant h bar is 1.005 times 10 to the negative 34 joules times seconds over 2 times the mass of our bullet is going to be 5 times 10 to the negative three kilograms, putting it in kilograms so that everything's in SI units and cancels out nicely. Um, and then our uncertainty in the velocity is given up top. So we got 1.0 times 10 to the negative five meters per second. Okay, cool. So you put all this together, then the uncertainty in the position is 1.055 times 10 to the negative 27 meters, right? This is our uncertainty in the position. Okay, so we can use the uncertainty principle even in the macroscopic world, but as you can see, this number is so small compared to the amount of distance that that bullet will travel in a second that this uncertainty is negligible. Right, so the uncertainty principle is always at play, right? Even in the macroscopic world, but this uncertainty that we just calculated, so small that we can really just uh, neglect this. This is negligible. However, what I wanna do is calculate the same uncertainty if we had an electron that had this same uncertainty in the velocity, right? So let's say we have an electron with the same uncertainty in velocity. So we have an electron with the same uncertainty 
in velocity. Right, so if we have this uh, electron with the same uncertainty in the velocity and we want to calculate the lower limit of this uncertainty in position, right, we use the exact same formula here, right, we will have two times m, except here we'll use the mass of an electron, so I'll have m sub e times delta v, right, so again, plug in everything, 0, 055 times 10 to the negative 24, 34 joules times seconds over two times our mass of an electron, 9.109 times 10 to the negative 31 kilograms, times the same uh, uncertainty in the velocity, 10 to the negative five meters per second. Okay, so um, this, when you, um, when you calculate all of this out, you get an uncertainty in the position of 5.79 meters right so now this is going to be non-negligible right this is a much larger uncertainty in the momentum i mean in the position especially when you consider how small an electron is if uh if your uncertainty for a electron's position is anywhere within 5.79 meters. This is like six meters of space that you're saying the electron could be, um, you know, within any point in that six meter space. That's a large amount of uncertainty for an electron's position. You basically don't know where it is if your uncertainty in the position is that large considering how small an electron is. So whether you're in the macroscopic or the microscopic, the uncertainty in position and momentum, this Heisenberg uncertainty principle exists in both spaces. It's just that in the macroscopic, um, it's usually negligible uh, in, mo in pretty much all cases. Whereas in the microscopic realm, we, we have to contend with this uncertainty because it's so large relative to the size of the particles that we're dealing with. Okay, one last thing about the uncertainty principle is that these uncertainties are calculated in a very specific way. They're calculated using the root mean square of these properties. So the root mean square deviation of these properties. And it's actually related to the expectation values, right? So um, if we wanted to calculate the uncertainty in the momentum, then what we would need to calculate is the expectation value of the square momentum operator minus the expectation value of the momentum operator squared. Now keep in mind, uh, let me finish this out real quick and take, you know, to the one half as so you square root this expression. So keep in mind, these are two different expectation values. The first one is the uh, expectation value of the square momentum operator. The other value is the expectation value of the momentum squared, right? So in this one, you square the operator first, then evaluate the expectation value. In this one, you operate, you, you do the expectation value, then square the result, right? So these are two completely different things. And same thing with the position, right? You just get the root mean square deviation of the position, right? So you would take the expectation value of the square momentum operator minus the expectation value of the momentum operator squared to the one half, right? These are all the root mean squared deviation of these properties. And this is how you actually calculate it uh, in quantum mechanics. You want to take those average values of the square of the operator minus the expectation value of the operator squared, right? And this is for any uh, general, any general operator, you can calculate its uncertainty using this, uh, this method.